guys, and welcome back to another episode of Bitbusters here on Tetra Bay Gaming, the series where I use engineering principles to tackle video game questions and myths. And you guys thought I forgot about this series. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's been like eight months since the last video, whatever. Anyways, in this video, I'll be trying to prove or disprove that cars in the real world would be able to drive upside down like they do in Mario Kart 8. Really quickly before we start, I just want to thank Amino again for sponsoring this video. A few of the many reasons I like Nintendo games is for their gameplay, characters, and overall polish. This strong attention to detail from Nintendo has created legions of passionate, sometimes too passionate, fans around the world, and Amino has one of the best gatherings of these fans out there. These high quality games from Nintendo come at the cost of having to wait months and sometimes years between the big releases. However, these gaps give us fans lots of time to speculate and get hyped. Amino provides an awesome place to post and browse about anything Nintendo, from posts speculating about the upcoming Super Smash Bros game, to fan art and theories. And if you just want to chat, there's hundreds of new chats created every day so you'll have plenty of Nintendo topics to discuss. So whether you're new to Nintendo games or have been playing them since Donkey Kong, if you're looking to connect with other fans, there's no place quite like Amino. I also just started a new poll in the Mario Amino which you can find under the Nintendo Nostalgia playlist. So if you would like, you can click on the link at the top of the description to help me decide once and for all who has the best mustache. And with all of that said, go grab your calculators and your abacus, let's bust some bits. So as many of you probably already know, the main gimmick and selling point of Mario Kart 8 was how the bikes and carts could now drive up walls and even upside down. Now in the game itself, in order to drive upside down, the vehicles take some creative license and are said to be driving in an anti-gravity section. Unfortunately, anti-gravity of this sort is not available in our world, or not yet anyway. So, without magical anti-gravity fields, is it possible for a cart in the real world to drive upside down like this? As always, first it's important to analyze the forces acting on Mario and the cart when he's just casually driving down a course like Moo Moo Meadows. In the downward direction, there's of course the combined weight of the driver, in this case Mario, and the cart. And then since every action requires an equal and opposite reaction, opposing this force, each wheel will have a normal force acting upwards. Additionally, since the cart is in motion, there will be frictional forces on the wheels from the road, as well as drag forces on the car acting in the opposite direction of travel. Now if we turn this upside down, we can see that things start to change. Now if the cart is driving upside down, due to gravity all of the existing vertical forces are now going to be directed downward. So what could keep a cart sticking to an upside down road? Well, really the only natural force that could keep the car upside down while driving is lift. Lift? You mean like airplanes? You mean like airfoils redirecting upstream air downwards which results in an equal resultant force upwards on the wing ultimately generating a lifting force? That kind of lift? That's the one. This aerodynamic force is defined by this here beautiful equation where rho is the density of air, v is the velocity of the vehicle, a is the planform area of a wing, and cl is the coefficient of lift. Yeah, okay, sure. But cars don't have wings, idiot. They do. Well, some do anyway. Specifically, Formula One style cars. Now these aren't quite the same wings like you'd see on an aircraft, but Formula One cars do have airfoil wings in the front and sometimes in the spoiler. These however aren't designed to allow Formula One cars to fly, but actually the opposite. These car wings redirect the air so that it pushes the car downward in order for the car to maintain contact with the ground when driving really fast and making sharp turns. This same idea applies if a car has these wings when driving upside down. Since the lift force is still acting towards the ground on which the car is driving upon, this lift force will now act against the weight and normal force in order to keep the car driving. And hey, what do you know, it just so happens that there is a cart in Mario Kart 8 which resembles a Formula One car, the Circuit Special. So now we can have another look at our forces from before and add the lift force acting upwards. So to break things down so far, in order for the car to remain in contact with the road upside down, the lift force has to be large enough in order to at least allow for the tires to make contact with the road. So if we assume that Mario is driving his cart at a constant velocity, the minimum lift force we would need would require all of the up and down forces to balance each other. So if we sum the forces in the vertical direction and equate them to be zero, an equation to determine the minimum cart speed required to drive upside down can be determined. 
We can further minimize the speed by assuming that the cart is just about to fall, meaning that the normal forces can be assumed zero on the tires. Now we can just plug in some numbers and we should be able to see if this is possible or not. First, let's start with the mass value. Since we're assuming Mario is the one driving the cart, we'll use his official mass of 89 kilograms. And for the cart, I'll assume it's the same mass as a professionally raced cart, which is around 79 kilograms. This then results in a total mass of 168 kilograms. For the coefficient of lift times the planform area, from experimental wind tunnel and computational fluid dynamic analysis on Formula 1 cars, this value is found to be about 6.8 cubic meters. Since carts are smaller than Formula 1 cars, by comparing average sizes I will apply a size correction factor of about 0.65. Next we have the constant acceleration due to gravity on Earth at 9.81 meters per second squared, and the density of air at normal temperatures at 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. And with all these numbers plugged in, we can find the absolute minimum velocity that Mario must be driving his cart in order to stay upside down to be 24.9 meters per second, or 89.6 kilometers per hour or 55.7 miles per hour for those Imperial System bros out there. I see you guys in the back. So can carts in real life reach this speed? They sure can. Some specialty carts, known as super carts, can reach speeds exceeding 260 kilometers per hour, which is way more than required. This means that under the assumed conditions, if you are around Mario's weight and you find a ramp to drive upside down in a Formula 1 style go-kart at a speed over 89.6 kilometers per hour, you too can relive your wildest Mario Kart 8 fantasies in real life. Now all we need is someone to develop a real life blue shell and we're set. Anyways, this bit is confirmed! And with that concludes this Bitbusters video guys and I hope you enjoyed it. This is only the second video in the series so any feedback on it would be greatly appreciated and if this video does well I will certainly make more of them in the future. Also, if you haven't yet checked out my first Bitbusters video where I analyze Flood from Super Mario Sunshine, be sure to check it out by clicking on the card right here. And if you would like to stay even more up to date with me and the channel, please be sure to follow me on my other social media sites and join my Discord server as well. Links to all of these will be found in the description below. And as always guys, thank you all so much for watching today and for all of your amazing support. I hope you learned something new, and I will see you in a bit.